Hey everybody, welcome to the Matt Report, the number one WordPress business podcast out in the world, the universe, on the internets, uh, everywhere that WordPress stuff can be heard and consumed. Uh, this is the show all about WordPress business. Uh, today I'm joined by Carrie Dills. We're going to talk all about her business uh, of WordPress, Genesis development, theme, design, and all that fun stuff of being a freelancer and uh, the ins and outs. Um, as always, mattreport.com slash subscribe. Join the mailing list. Tell your friends, tell your family, and if you're looking to grow your WordPress business to get inside access to uh, my guests and other uh, monthly trainings and seminars, mattreport.com slash join. Uh, check out the pro section. Um, about 50 folks now joining up uh, in the community, trying to get them all to uh, chat with each other in the forums. It's a fun time, so check that out. All right, Carrie Dills, I forgot to ask you in the beginning how I'm, how I'm supposed to introduce you. CEO... Chief fun person, what's the deal? How do you tell yourself? <laughs> that lady, hey you, <laughs> Carrie hey you Dills. With WordPress. <laughs> yeah, no, no official titles. Awesome. Other than wearer of many hats. Awesome, awesome. Um, so you've been building sites since 1998. You've probably seen a lot of stuff uh, in the web technology world. Take us back to how you uh, discovered WordPress and, and why it's your your main source of income today. Yeah, so got started back when animated GIFs were really the cool <laughs> thing and maybe some scrolling JavaScripts. Um, <clears throat> I took a, a side side detour in business, tried lots of different things, and anyway, when I came back around to freelancing full-time, uh, a guy named Brian that I was working with introduced me to WordPress, and uh, I was telling him about a project that I'd done where I built a, basically a CMS by hand using classic ASP, and uh, he was like, wait, let me tell you about this WordPress thing, and it, it does that for you, and uh, I was pretty much mesmerized and, and haven't, haven't looked back, so yeah, it does so much for you right out of the gate, uh, so you can, you can develop stuff uh, that before would have taken me all that lead up time just to get to the CMS point, and now it's just there yeah. for the taking, so. Is it when you, ASP, was that like app pools and restarting IIS services to get things to run? Like, God, I remember those days. <laughs> oh, yeah. I ha I've actually got a couple of clients that are legacy clients that are still on dreadful classic ASP sites that are so insecure. And, I mean, the code at this point is ashamed of myself. But uh, when I've had to go in and do maintenance on those, I'm, I have to reorient myself in the world of IIS and how to uh, do web services. And I've... <clears throat> Yeah, I'm glad that's not my everyday. Yeah, <laughs> thank God. Um, so looking back at your past, there's a few things I want to talk about. One of them is, uh, sticks out pretty interesting is you used to manage a store for Starbucks. Um, and a lot of folks, especially in the development world or coding world uh, that we live in, they're always like, oh, I don't want to go work for a corporation. Um, you know, unless maybe it's like Google or something like that. A lot of people have the stigma of corporate of corporate life. What was that like at Starbucks? Was it was it like that? Like, oh God, the the pains of and the druthers of corporations, or were we really learning stuff there? Um, I'll I'll answer your question, but I'll back up just a tiny bit. Um, I left I left a cubicle job, and uh, where I just thought, well, I never want to work on computers sitting at a desk all day in cubicles again, and I want to go open a coffee shop. Um, but I didn't know anything about running a coffee shop, so I thought, well, I'll go work for Starbucks for a year, figure that out, and uh, learn on their dime, so to speak. <clears throat> and that turned into um, about a nine-year career with them. And to, now to actually get to answering your question, they were a great company to work with. Um, anytime you get into a large corporation, there's always going to be unflattering things behind the scenes, but for the most part, their corporate culture is um, – Great, and of course, anybody that's ever, I know they're lovers and haters, but anybody that's ever been in the store and has experienced, you know, a barista remembering your name or recalling that you like two and a half Splendas, um, they have something special going on, and <clears throat> I think that's where I've learned a lot of the, uh, in, in, in addition to just business management skills, the customer service uh, skills that have translated over into my web, web business. Yeah, they, I, I mean, from what I've seen from the outside, they're supposed to have a really intense training process for all this stuff. Is that the case, or is it is there like a univ Starbucks university? Uh, they, their training department invests some serious uh, time and dollars into providing training materials. And, of course, in, a, in an ideal world, you know, you get all your training hours in, and um, 
you know, experience behind the machines, and, you know, sometimes that that doesn't always happen according to plan, but they do invest a considerable amount, and especially even as you get up, I mean, and that's all the way from starting at a barista level and then on up into each successive position uh, has training associated with it and mentoring and yeah, because I, I I read an article about a fellow that um, I think he might have even been like homeless, and he got a job at Starbucks, and just the the training process and the just elevated him to, and he ended up running a, a whole bunch of stores or becoming like a a regional exec for a Starbucks, all because yeah. of their you know training and, and promoting within kind of mentality. So that's pretty cool. Yes. The uh, so you, you did that for s quite some time, and then this giggle snort thing happened, uh, you know, what was that? <laughs> um, it, being an entrepreneur is really at the core of what's always driven me, and it didn't matter necessarily what the final product was. It was the ability to uh, create something that I felt I had ownership on. Um, the greeting card idea came out of um, some old experiences in print design and graphic design and I'm gonna. This is not. I'm not even do, gonna give this to your pro members, Matt. I'm giving this piece of information away for free for everybody. Yeah. I was senior yearbook editor in high school. Ooh. I was uh, <laughs> one of those nerds of a certain class. Uh -huh. um, so the idea of doing things for print layout and and getting to be humorous and uh, also mixed with the entrepreneurial side was where the the, the reading card business came from. Uh, yeah. It was an utter failure. My mother loved it. Uh, she was my number one customer. But other than that, you know, I kind of fell flat. <laughs> and, uh, I was actually sharing. I was at out at uh, Work Camp San Francisco this past week, and uh, I was sharing with those guys how getting into this greeting card business and um, networking with brick and mortar retailers, who were my target customers, actually ended up creating some web development opportunities for me. Mm. Uh, the those people that I started associating with did not actually want my greeting cards, but uh, they did need web services. So once they found out that I had this uh, technology skill set, uh, it transitioned from um, them being, uh, you know, people I was trying to target for greeting card sales and the web development customers. Mm. We're, um, on one, there's a bunch of things I want to talk about about that. Uh, on one hand, I know that, or at least I've heard that the greeting card business. Is a really lucrative business. I guess I don't know what the factors are that you have to execute to actually, you know, become super successful with greeting cards. I'd imagine like distribution and getting into shops and things like that. People carrying your product. Um, but what was your driving factor of the entrepreneurial stuff? You, do you have somebody in the family? Um, were you always just ambitious to start your own thing? Um, I don't. I, I think it was just kind of something that I was born with. But I do have uh, my. Uh, my mom's dad owned a grocery store uh, growing up, and then my mom's mom had a uh, owned a flower shop, so both of them were entrepreneurs. And then my my dad's mom uh, had a beauty salon, so I come I do come from a family of entrepreneurs in that regard. But you know, even as a kid, I like to see you know sell candy in the hallways at school and, and turn it for a buck. I was always scrolling away money in one of my uh, my little cash boxes with where if you flipped it over, I had the combination written. So it was real high secure. <laughs> That's stuff. Yeah, um, that's awesome. And and what was, so you did that for probably what just a year, year and a half, and then you transitioned over to the web. Yeah, I think I gave it a full. I don't know about a two and a half year run. So basically, while well, you know Starbucks was still paying my bills, um, but I wasn't. I was I don't know maybe doing thirty five hours a week or so there. So in my extra time, I was uh, doing all my research to get ready to start the company, and then I think I let it run for about a full year before I um, shut down shop. And that was actually, during that, I, I built my website uh, using Magento, which was like, I don't know, driving uh, driving a school bus when like a bicycle would have gotten, <laughs> gotten <laughs> yeah. there. It was yeah. way overkill for an e-commerce solution uh, based on what I needed, but I hadn't met WordPress yet, so... Yeah. Um, and and you were just and you were you know not to not to stick on this subject for too long but I think it's really interesting you you were actually making the designing the greeting cards printing the greeting cards and then going out and trying to sell them like would you have like hundreds of them and bring them to a store and say you know please buy 50 of these to stock how do, how did that work Yeah so kind of in the greeting card industry or maybe in the paper industry in general you have uh, something called reps 
representatives that you hire to uh, then go try to sell your product. Because obviously, I'm you know, I can't be all over the place. Um, so you try to get these uh, these firms to pick up your line, and then you create something called a rep kit, uh, which is basically you know like a little cute briefcase with uh, a sampling of all your cards, what your minimum orders are, kind of terms and conditions, all that stuff. Um, and you get them in their hands, and then they go kind of pound the pavement on your behalf. Mm. Um, so I did some pavement pounding locally, um, and then I had some other folks do that for me um, in a couple of other locations. And then if you have the big bucks, uh, you go to a New York market and try to get some national distribution there. But it's incredibly, I mean, even just like the booth rental fees, and uh, it was way beyond the shoestring budget I was... Uh, working with. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Um, yeah, yeah, there is money to be made, but really the key is distribution because you yeah. know when your when your profit the profit margin is fantastic on a I mean, the markup is great on a paper product, but still you're talking about like sixty cents um, as opposed to thousands of dollars. You're talking about pennies. Right. Um, and so in order to get any traction, you've just got to move a ton of product, and uh, I, I never. Well, let's just say nobody knows what Giggle Snort Greetings is unless they're watching the Matt Report. <laughs> Where's my mom? Tremendous. Um, <laughs> so you made that. So how do you make that transition? What was the transition like to say, okay, see you later, Starbucks? Did you land a client first? Did you just take a leap of faith and say, hope, hope that I can, I can start scoring some of these uh, businesses to sign up with me in the website? What was that transition like? Um, it was a little bit of both. Uh, I did have some clients that I was already working with that were just, uh, you know, people referral business. Um, so I'd already started to generate some freelance income um, before I took the, the the full step away from Starbucks. Um, but it wasn't until after I, I guess it was about the holiday season, about three years ago, when I uh, left Starbucks and started freelancing full time and could actually focus all my energy with it. And then really the tipping point for that came when um, my Starbucks work was interfering with my ability to deliver on a client project. Um, and, you know, no offense, Starbucks, but, you know, $12 an hour or freelance income at, you know, uh, $60, $75 an hour. So um, it made sense at some point just to, just to jump ship. Yeah. Uh, actually, one thing I did forget to mention at the top of the show uh, for the pro listeners, Carrie will be sticking around to talk about uh, just about that, about pricing um, and setting up pricing as a freelancer from the consulting side and from the actual web development side. So if you are a pro listener, uh, you will uh, get that segment uh, uh, in the forums over at the community. Um, so you get into WordPress. How did you stumble upon Genesis, and, and how did you pick that as your as your vertical? Or did it? Did you already just? Did you set out? Let me just say, take a step back. Did you take a step? Did you look at it and say, where can I make the biggest impact in WordPress? Or did you happen to just find Studio Press and then say, this is what I'm going to stick with? Uh, definitely the latter. So okay. kind of a, a back backdoored myself in um, when I. I knew nothing. I mean, I had a history of web development, but the world of WordPress was a 100% new adventure for me. So I started with um, a subscription over at lynda.com uh, and watched uh, Morton, whose last name I'll just butcher, but Morton, I think Rand Hendrickson is how you say his last name, maybe. Uh, and he was teaching all these uh, WordPress classes, so I, I did that as my starting point and then just consumed uh, you know, as much information as I could get my hands on. And then at some point, you know, I worked with a lot of different themes. I mean, everything from the things you find at Theme Forest and Elegant Themes, uh, and then stumbled on Studio Press. And once I started really kind of, kind of getting into it, uh, I liked the setup of the Genesis framework, and I, like for me, that was easier to tackle than WordPress as an entirety. Um, and over time, of course, you get to know just pure WordPress. Um, but anyhow, so that was how I started, and I just found it ended up being a good niche business-wise, since that's where I was spending my time learning and growing. Uh, it just kind of naturally unfolded that mm. that was the kind of work people were hiring me for. Yeah, and, and here we are, X amount of years later. There's still no definitive like I want to be a WordPress developer. Let me 
let me take this course. Like there's still that still doesn't exist, and it's still not clear. There's still not a clear channel or path, even from .org that says, brand new, funnel through this. <laughs> uh, you know, any any words of advice for those that are, who are just starting out as wanting to be a developer or even a designer and say where to start. Well, that's a great question and really a great point. And I think because people approach WordPress from so many different backgrounds and experiences that it's hard to say, okay, this is the path you should take because WordPress is incredibly broad. I mean, you can get in on the marketing aspect, the SEO, the design, the layout, the responsive, the, um, the accessibility, the language, the actual programming. I mean, it's so multifaceted. I guess I would say that if you're beginning with WordPress, whatever your interest is or your key skill set, work on growing that and don't feel like, uh, go deep rather than broad. So you don't have to know everything there is to know about every aspect uh, of WordPress, but find an area and then see if you can go deep in it. Mm. And that is actually a good segue for my next question. Um, because okay. Studio Press um, or Genesis is owned by a parent company, Copyblogger, I think they're in a position to to really break out with sort of the partnerships between their developers and designers like yourself. Um, you know, they don't specific. They have sort of the 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 partnership program where you can upload a theme and, and sell it in their quote unquote marketplace. Um, I think they're in a position to really break out in that area. I don't know which vertical they'll take yet. Um, but if they had like an official partnership program, what would your wish list be for that? Hmm. Um, I don't know. That question catches me off guard a little bit because I hadn't thought about. Um, and let me, so let me give a little bit of the reason why I ask is because I'm I'm the conspiracy theorist, right? And and all this stuff. Um, and like we have to deal with sort of the ebbs and flows of WordPress, be it some of the trickle down effect of WordPress.com into .org, and then all the stuff around .org. Uh, and and of course, as WordPress keeps continuing to evolve, there's always these, there's always changes that really impact the way you and I make our money. I see the same thing either coming or uh, coming for Copyblogger and, and Genesis because they have such a, a wide uh, audience of developers who are building the Genesis way. Mm -hmm. And there could potentially be something down the road that they tweak that really impacts the way you, know, you theme or the way you b build your own themes or support your clients. Um, so if they ever came out with a partnership program, I'm just wondering what you think should be included in that. Um, I think like one thing that's different about Genesis versus WordPress Core, uh, it's not it's developed it's developed by a specific team. So in other words, there aren't community contributions. Um, now certain plugins that are created by StudioPress, they've started putting up on GitHub so that. Uh, other developers in the community can chime in on those. Um, and I don't know, I think it'd be nice to, I mean, of course, it's GPL, so you can get in there and dig around the code all day long and, and um, create products based off of that. But if it was a partnership, I, I, I would like to see community contributions from those developers that are uh, developing for the platform to maybe be able to uh, do some things, things specifically to make our development lives a little easier. Mm. Um, what about marketing and, and promotion or showcasing you as a freelancer or a trusted partner? Anything like that? Uh, they already kind of do that in a way that's, uh, I mean, I'm on, I'm on the Genesis recommended developer list and I've got some sites up in their showcase and uh, one of the things that I really enjoy about uh, the relationship of Studio Press to uh, people like myself is um, because Copyblogger, I guess, isn't interested in necessarily hammering out websites for people or, uh, or creating you know, a slew of premium plugins, that's not their business focus, uh, that they've shown incredible to support to people in the community that are developing products and services around Genesis. Um, so you know, I'll get tweets and retweets or shout outs or uh, things like that from their team that obviously benefit my business, but there's not, you know, it's uh, that's all just kind of organic. Sweet. Sweet. Uh, let's go a little bit further into now what you have recently launched. You're on your second theme. 
um, that you've recently launched or, you know, second uh, productized theme that you've recently mm -hmm. launched that you're selling. Uh, we're, when, uh, for the pro members for the month of March, the ProCast for March will be you uh, and Tom McFarlane, which we'll record tomorrow, talking about that from soup to nuts, that whole business. But let's give folks uh, a brief overview of, of that today. Uh, you know, why did you go into doing a theme? Uh, how has it been so far? Um, and any thoughts uh, moving forward with that? Yeah, uh, so everybody's dream, Matt, is to make money while they're sleeping. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, one of the my big frustrations... I actually sleep on a, on a mattress made of money. So yeah, it's just preferably. like an osmosis with, thing, you know? You know, even a money tree perhaps right. rains down <laughs> while, while I'm dreaming of, of money. Yeah. Um, but, you know, one of the frustrations freelancing is, you know, you, you eventually run out of hours that you can trade for money. Um, and I know, you know, some there's value-based pricing and all that kind of stuff I'm not going to get into. But, you know, time trading time for dollars. Um, and so this in, inadvertent income cap. Uh, so one of my goals for, for 2014 uh, was to be able to generate some products that could uh, have a longer life shelf than just a single client project. Um, and themes, just I enjoy theming, so uh, that was just sort of a natural uh, evolution. Uh, so anyways, yeah, just released the second theme, Winning Agent Pro, which is a real estate focused theme for uh, Genesis, and it's been really well received. Um, this is, Studio Press uh, had a real estate theme in their lineup called Agent Press, but it hadn't been updated for Genesis 2.0 uh, and was not mobile responsive. So the community um, was crying out, Matt, they were crying out for a, a mobile responsive real estate theme. Uh, and this one, it was actually a collaboration with a guy named Richard Hardian, who's a uh, realtor up in the Chicago, uh, Illinois area. And um, so he kind of provided a lot of the, the insights on what a realtor a Realtors would like to see. Mm. Uh, so yeah, you just answered a few of the questions that I had lined up, but I want to take this into a slightly different direction. Um, we have um, a real estate theme ourselves, but it's not based on Genesis or anything like that. I mean, we actually designed it maybe a year ago. Um, you know, it's not something that we're heavily promoting, but we find that with the real estate theme, the agents who are buying it just have absolutely minus one thousand percent knowledge and understanding of WordPress. Um, I had somebody over the weekend, you know, email us and ask for a refund because they were like, I, I just can't even, I don't even understand what's going on with WordPress. They, and they just said that, hey, I'm hosted on GoDaddy, I'm just going to delete the WordPress install and create one of their instant sites. And I responded with, hey, I'm more than happy to help you set it up, blah, 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 blah. And they said, no, thank And I actually logged. They sent me their log, and I went in, I logged, and I set it up, the home page and all this stuff, put it in the sample property. And they were just like, you know, I, we really appreciate that, but we're never going to even know what to do with this. <laughs> um, it, it, now, you said that you partnered with a real estate agent, which is super smart. Um, you know, how, how has the – do you see the same kind of uh, support issues with your real estate themes, um, and how do you plan to tackle that? Well, let me, let me tell you what not to do. Don't <laughs> release a theme and then two days later go on vacation. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> that ended up just being kind of unfortunate timing. But uh, I, we released a theme and, uh, you know, immediately, like we tried to foresee, you know, certain support issues. So we came up with the FAQs. I did a full, you know, write-up. Uh, you know, a theme setup tutorial. I had a couple tutorials for customizations ready to go right out the gate. Um, but you never foresee it all. And, of course, you know, immediately you start getting uh, questions. Um, so it was just, you know, trying trying to keep up with those out of the gate because, you know, you want, obviously you want the theme to be usable and understandable and, um, and put those resources out there. So in, if, in retrospect... I would have had even more material ready to go um, on that support side because, you know, it's the same questions for the most part. 90% of the questions are going to be the same questions. So uh, now it's about generating content to support those, um, those questions. We're looking at doing a, a support forum so that people can ask questions publicly and then benefit from seeing, uh, you know, building a knowledge base. 
I forgot your original question, and now I'm just kind of talking. No, I mean, you, you've answered it. You're, you're sort of going into the areas of how you're going to support that. Um, is it say if you were to look back at both the themes? I know the the agent theme is the newer newer of the two, but are you seeing more success with the agent theme because it's a very niche market um, versus uh, your original? Oh yeah, okay. <laughs> hands down. Um, and that's there. There are multiple factors at, at play there. For one, it doesn't hurt that that theme is the agent pre or the winning agent theme is being sold off the Studio Press Marketplace, because that's more visibility than I could ever generate over at CarryDills.com. Um, so that's one huge factor. Uh, but the other one is, yeah, creating an, a niche theme, or niche, as you say, um, people people want to envision what their, what their website is going to look like. So you imagine going, if you're selling a home, the difference between going into a completely empty house versus going into a house where it's staged, it's set up, there's brownies baking in the oven, the candle lit, smells good. Like, I can picture myself living here. Um, so that was kind of the idea of going into a very industry-specific theme, um, creating con sample content or layouts that are actually going to be, somebody could see themselves putting their content there. Uh, whereas my first theme, I called it utility, um, and being, oh, you can, it's, it's utilitarian, you could use it for anything. Uh, and of course you can, I, I mean I'm biased, but uh, I think it's a great theme, but you could use it across so many different types of sites that, you know, people want something specific. And even if that site could be specific, if they can't visualize it, then it's no good. Yeah. And when I interviewed Brian Gardner, um, the founder of Studio Press. That's one of the things he said. Like he he has like you know it's a labor of love to put together a theme. You have like all these aspirations. Like you know, like you're calling it utility. Ours is called minimize, and it's like it's minimal. You can do anything you want with it. You can take it in a hundred thousand different ways. But then on the other end of the screen, the person looking at it is looking at you know and they're drooling. They're like, okay, this is like what is what am I supposed to do with it? I'm supposed to move all these widgets? No, I I don't want this. Uh, and in the age of like the drag and drop phenomenon. Like, guess what? Something that's just focused in a vertical that's set up out of the box, like that's going to sell better because people can can envision what their site's going to look like, envision what their site's going to look like when they install it. Um, the other thing is that Brian said that sometimes the, th the themes just sell because of the name, <laughs> and and he's put out he's put out themes where he's like, I've I've worked on this for you know I don't know hundreds of hours, and I put it out there, and it's I forget which name of the theme was, uh, man, I, I want to say it was eleven. I think it might have been 1140, which was his, like, I think last or second to last revision of his own blog. Yeah. And he's like, nobody bought it. But then when he, they just released, like, corporate or, or the new corporate, and everybody was like, oh, corporate, corporate blog or a corporate site. I need that. Like, yes. <laughs> and, like, what, what's the point of calling something 1140 and, like, having this backstory behind it when you just say one word, business, corporate, and it sells? Um. Let's talk about something a little bit uh, that's probably wiped a smile off of both of our faces. Uh, <laughs> recently on Twitter, you had a little back and forth with somebody who was uh, 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 displaying your theme as being part of a collection of themes that he supports or wasn't really sure if he was supporting it or reselling it. I guess I should have dug a little bit deeper into that. Um, and then we had some, uh, well, we, I say we as the WordPress community, had some discussion about, oh, this is G GPL, this is what happens, but please reference me uh, in this as those, as the author and as the person who is not going to support you <laughs> from purchase, purchasing or, uh, or accessing it through for, through this guy's site. Um, what do we do? Is there anything or this is just the way it is and we have to just set up these, these walls of support? Uh, well, first, let me, let me say I, I, I was sorry for my Twitter rant. Uh, so, you know, you say things out there on Twitter and you can't quite take them back, but uh, I, I could have handled that a little more professionally. Um, but the, the issue was, to tell the, the backstory on this, I came across this site and uh, this fellow was selling um, in, an installed theme. So in other words, it was the Genesis framework plus the theme um, and like a, a, a couple of other integration, or like customize your colors or something like that, um, all for one low price. And <laughs> But the, the presentation of it was, uh, you know, this is brought to you by Studio Press and me. 
so I, I took immediate offense that he was claiming what to me looked like claiming authorship of, of a product that wasn't his. Um, but the, the, the bigger question, so GPL, uh, the, the theme is licensed under GPL, which means that he uh, is well within his rights to uh, redistribute that code base. The problem with this, and I know the GPL lawyers are probably going to call me and your reviewers may throw rotten tomatoes, and um, I'm, I'm no legal ep expert. Clearly, I couldn't do the job I do if WordPress wasn't GPL, uh, right? I mean, that's the whole gist of it. I even have have a job in this industry or in because WordPress is an open source project. So I love that, and uh, I, I think that should be there. But the question, the rightness or the wrongness of taking what someone else has worked hard to produce and then monetizing it in, to me, kind of a dishonest fashion is... I don't know that there's any way to stop that. Mm -hmm. um, so the bigger question, you know, support-wise, was if someone purchases this through him, they're buying an unlicensed copy of my theme. Um, but am I therefore entitled, or am I uh, obligated to provide support uh, to his customers? And that's she's kind of getting into a little bit of sticky mess there. So. Yeah, yeah, because you know, inevitably, it's going to happen where the more and more he uh, or they uh, install these themes and get them out onto the web, you know, a couple Google searches, and they're going to find the original author, and you're going to have some customer, angry or otherwise, you know, hitting you up saying, hey, got your theme. Uh, I can't install this, you know, page doesn't look right, can you help me out? And then you have to take the time, look it up in your customer database, see if they're under support, then you realize that you're not even from my customer base, you're from somebody else, and then you have to deal with that whole um, ball of wax, which is never fun, because um, we actually have themes that are have the same name as a theme that's on Theme for us, so we actually get that quite often. That people find us more available than the actual theme author of one of our matching names. Um, so that was an interesting, you know, thing <laughs> we discovered in all the all, all of this stuff. But I think you're right. I, I don't think there is a solid way that we can either resolve this other than the barriers of support um, mm -hmm. and making that clear to folks. Let's talk about uh, WordPress communities, WordPress folks. Um, I feel like 20,000, uh, 20, 20, I feel like 2014. I feel like 2014 <laughs> is going to be a year uh, where we all put our grown-up pants on for situations like this, um, for situations uh, like um, recent uh, articles about WP Engine and community. Um, I just think that overall we're really starting to grow up 10, 11 years, 10, 10 and a half years later. Um, do, you, do you have the same kind of feeling uh, uh, like that, S specifically with word camps, online events, Twitter followers? We're all friends, but in the end, we're all kind of competing with our customers' dollars. Big audience, totally agree. It's still going to mm -hmm. go up, but at some point, we're going to hit the plateau. What are your thoughts? Um, well, that's a... That's a broad question, so yeah. I'll just pick a, a pick something <laughs> area. in between there. And, and actually, on the on the list, I have: Do either of these relate to your talk uh, at St. Louis uh, this past week? Um, you know, how do you see where? What direction do you see the community going in uh, in 2014? Do you just see more of the same, or do you see us kind of maturing where uh, we're we're changing our tone a little bit? I think there's definitely. Uh, some maturation taking place, which is natural in an industry and, you know, been around, like you said, a little over 10 years now. Um, so seeing some acquisitions, some roll-ups, some, uh, you know, a lot of people are now moving uh, that have been service-oriented or moving into uh, product offerings. So, yeah, I think we'll continue to see that trend. Um, and it... I still, I, I still very much embrace the community in this idea that we're not all competing for the same customers and the same dollars. I think there, for anybody willing enough to think uh, creatively and offer some creative problem solving, um, there are a lot of needs out there um, and opportunities to make money off of meeting those needs. Uh, so I don't think our demise is coming where we're all going to you know, turn in, it's either going to be a Microsoft or an Apple and <laughs> right. by 2015 and we'll have to pick sides. Uh, but, well, I guess to go back to like a, a, an Apple, 
uh, example of Apple and Android. Like when when the Android platform came out uh, for the phones, and you know all of a sudden you've got open source software happening. Um, everybody raced. Uh, all the handset manufacturers raced. All the uh, software developers raced, and um, you know what you see five years later is a total shakedown, and there's just a couple of primary players still making handsets for. Um, I, sorry, I just went on on a massive tangent, but anyways, th so I think that we'll see that there will be some some definite uh, top players that emerge um, and hold on to that top spot, but I don't think that means there's not room for the rest of us. Yeah, so, it, I don't know. and I I believe that. Um... So in the beginning, we talked about there's no real clear path, competition and business and products aside. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, as far as the individual getting to know what WordPress is from a software platform, from a community, uh, from an, uh, a business opportunity, uh, there is no clear path walking in that says, oh, here's the steps you follow to be a developer, here's the steps you follow to be an entrepreneur. Um, part of your talk uh, was about um, you know, helping others, mentorships, or, or just collaborating with others. Um, you know, WordPress is huge as far as all the op opportunity you have, uh, you know, to take those different verticals. Um, what was your takeaway from the St. Louis talk? Were folks um, acceptive of that of that kind of, uh, of, of sort of your outline to approaching WordPress, the community? Uh, well, there's what people said to my face, and then you never know what they're, <laughs> what they're going to say later. But great job, what, she's great. <laughs> what seemed to resonate the most uh, was this idea of people who have been in the community a long time, know all the the ins and outs and the back roads and the back stories, and they're contributing to core. Um, and then there's those people who have just been introduced to to WordPress.com. They just created their user account for the first time. They didn't. They don't even know there is a self-hosted WordPress. Um, so that idea that as a um, as a community, we need to support all of those all of those players. So not reject someone just because they're not uh, you know as advanced a user as, as we are or whatnot. But what makes the WordPress WordPress ecosystem great uh, is that all of those people are contributing in whatever capacity they can. And if that were to suddenly disappear, well, there'd be no, there'd be no WordPress. Right. Um, so I think, you know, I think it was well received. I hope it was uh, well received. It was awesome. Uh, do you have one thing that you you can turn people to, like when you're at WordCamps uh, and they're asking you these questions, or you're doing this talk? Is there one thing you can turn them to to say start here, or does that not exist yet? Um, I. I think the answer would be tailored to the individual. Uh, a, like a, a, a local meetup, I always recommend is a great starting point great just to connect point. with yeah. some other users um, and a place that's kind of a safe place to ask questions. And uh, you know, that would be my best start here answer. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, in the absence of a local um, WordPress community, then you know, just being engaged in online WordPress communities. Uh, you know, whether you're on Twitter or Google Plus or even Facebook. Maybe even I mean I don't know. There's WordPress communities on all of those major outlets. Yeah, absolutely. One of the questions I meant to ask before, um, and in the intro section of the interview, uh, as we sort of wrap up here, what is how does running impact your life and your work and your life work balance and everything around it? Uh, is it as a dramatic uh, cornerstone as I th might think it is <laughs> to you? Um. I see you're doing half marathons, and, and then you're shooting for a marathon, right? No, I don't so. think I ever need to do a, a full marathon. Okay. <laughs> I'm just going to string together my halves and yeah. call <laughs> cool. um, I think it gets me out from behind the desk, which I'm, you know, I spend so many hours sitting here, so just from a, like a physical activity standpoint, it's good. But it's also, it's also a kind of uh, therapy. I run with a friend, and uh, we talk each other's ears off for an hour or however long we're running and uh, I don't know it's good it's just it's good it's good mentally spiritually physically all of those things I don't know that necessarily makes me work better other than to say it's a stress reliever yeah yeah, yeah which which I think you know at the end of the day uh, yields yields some good results anyway because I know that's with me it's when you get that mode when you're sitting here for 
some days 16 hours looking at the same stupid monitor <laughs> and you're just like, God, I can't take it anymore. Uh, but being able to break it up uh, throughout the day and maybe just say, I'm going to stop, I'm going to go for a run, I'm going to come back and finish this uh, is a super helpful thing. Final question, what's the biggest challenge right now uh, and how do you plan on overcoming it? Uh, biggest challenge right now is enough hours in the day. Um, I'm still doing a lot of client work um, and then trying to kind of squeeze in around the edges uh, this product development and now uh, supporting the couple of products I do have out there. Um, and so my I'm in a, I'm in a mastermind group and uh, those guys, their biggest advice to me has been to do better time blocking. So get rid of the distractions, set up a, a chunk of time to work on whatever it is, uh, whatever project it is, instead of bouncing around all over the place um, and just feeling stressed and not effective. Um, so that's what I'm that's what I'm trying to do. It's awesome. Yes. Yeah. Time blocking is super important. Um, I mean, I always start off the, I feel like every New Year resolution, that's how I start off. Like, I'm going to get better at time blocking. And I was great. January, I was just like, boom, 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 boom. February, gone. <laughs> so now I'm trying to get back uh, into time blocking uh, for the month of March. So that's, that's super important. Uh, for those of you that are in the pro section, stick around because at the end of the show, Carrie is going to talk about uh, pricing, uh, some of the tips and tricks about how she uh, has landed on her pricing structure, uh, meritport.com slash join uh, to learn more about the pro membership. It's going to lead us into the last few segments of the interview. Uh, segment number one, what's in your toolbox? What app or SaaS uh, offering do you use to get your business done uh, that you might think our listeners aren't privy to? Like an Evernote, but probably something that's not as well known as that. Um, my favorite tool recently is Migrate DB Pro, uh, which is a plugin that you can install on a on a current site and then also on your uh, your live site. And it basically takes you from development to production. It, it takes uh, your database. It takes your. They now have a media uploader that takes all your media with it, and it's just a huge time saver. So loving that money well spent. Yeah, and it was like what thirty bucks, right, for one license? I uh, paid like the one ninety nine for the developer. Oh yeah, if you get the developer. Uh, yep. Yeah, yeah, if in the context of time saved, I mean, I made that up real fast. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Brad Tuznard uh, is a developer behind that, uh, and you can uh, go over to Matt Report and search for him and check out our awesome interview. Back then, he was just rolling it out, so he's got a lot of good stories behind that. Yes. Going to uh, launch into the lightning round. Ask you a series of quick questions, and you'll have a series of quick answers. Hopefully. <laughs> What's the one plugin you cannot live without? Uh, Gravity Forms. A favorite WordPress or business book? Uh, I'll just give you the one I'm currently reading, which is Entree Leadership by Dave Ramsey. Awesome. Uh, a quote that you live or run your business by? Uh, I like to eat, therefore I must work. <laughs> uh, the best business advice you ever received? Uh, that's an easy one. That was my dad, and he told me, find something that you love so much that you would do it for free, and then find someone who will pay you to do that. Awesome. Uh, what's the longest a client project has ever taken? Boy, um, probably 10 months. Oh, not that bad. If you had to switch to another CMS, what would it be? I guess I'd whip out or dust off some classic ASP and... Uh, <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> nightmare. Uh, who should I interview next? Hmm. Um, I met some really fantastic people up in the St. Louis WordPress community, and uh, Joshua Ray would be an interesting fellow. He was one of the organizers up there. Awesome. I'll write that down. That's tremendous. Um, what was the one question I didn't ask you that I should have? Um, why is my oven beeping right now? Why is your oven beeping right now? Uh, that is because I threw in some Brussels sprouts to roast and totally didn't look at the time, and I might have crusty burnt ones here in a while. <laughs> That's awesome. First time ever uh, a uh, cooking accident has happened uh, on the Matt Report, so you own the, you own the trophy for that. Uh, <laughs> it's been a tremendous uh, interview. Uh, where can folks find you on the web to say thanks? Uh, at carriedills.com or at cdills on Twitter. That's awesome. And, uh, Carrie, thanks for taking the time. Uh, for folks who are sticking around for the pro section, 
listen on in at the forums. Go over to the forums, log into the site, myreport.com slash join if you want to find out all about that good stuff. See you on the flip side. Thanks, Matt. Pleasure.